All right, guys. So what Jimmy and I are going to be covering with you right now is uh, kind of the the I guess you can say mindset and attitude and kind of um, you know how to work how to properly um, work B leads. And I can tell you this, me personally, I love B leads. Number one, they're cheap. It really takes the financial pressure off of you. And I got to be honest, man, I work B leads the same as I do A leads. I don't treat them. I don't treat them any different. I treat every prospect like they're a buyer. But Jimmy, I know you'd put together some information um, uh, for us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Joe. Well, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. <laughs> There's a Avi Asselin. I asked Joe to find a picture with a, a, a beef rib half eaten. And sure enough, I forgot about this uh, trip that we took. But uh, there is a lot of meat on that bone. And that's what bee leads are. They have a lot of meat on the bone. And I want to tell you guys uh, uh, my, my experience just this week. Um, but I want to start with the story. You know, back in the late 80s, I don't know if you guys ever watched this movie, but it was called I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. And um, it was really funny. You had Chris Rock in there, and he does this little scene where uh, he walks up to a barbecue stand, and uh, he asks the guy how much for an order of ribs, and he says, you know, $2.50. And Chris Rock says, wow, $2.50, that's a lot of money. And he says, how many ribs do I get with that? And he says, five. And he goes, that's like 50 cents a rib. And the guy, you know, nods his head, yeah. And, and, and Chris Rock says, let me have one. And so the guy yells out to the back, one order of ribs. And then Chris Rock corrects him and he says, no, I just want one rib, right? And <laughs> So, so I mean, it's hilarious. You got to see it. And he says, I sure am hungry. Right. And then at the end of the, at the end of the scene, what's, what's kind of funny is so he goes to pay him his 50 cents and he pulls out this big old wad of cash and he goes, do you have change for a hundred? Right. So, um, you know, Chris Rock ends up doing this skit uh later on a television program in living color he kind of did a bunch of different variations of it and uh they called them uh, cheap pete and that's what i think of when it comes to b leads because you know whether you are on a really tight budget or maybe you're sitting fine financially and you got a bunch of a leads it doesn't matter if you got that wide of cash or you just got a pocket of change you can buy B leads and turn that into money. And so that's what I want to talk about today. There's a lot of meat on that bone. Th this is what happens when I talk to new agents all over Texas. I tell them, I look at the B lead list and I say, look, you can get these leads. And they'll say, well, what is a B lead, Jimmy? And I'll say, well, you know, these are leads that we buy from an outside vendor. They're typically 12 months to 60 months old. And they usually say, oh, man, five years old. No, I don't want those. I don't want to work them. And, and, and that's the wrong mentality because you know what? There's a lot of meat on that bone. You can take these leads that are old and go out there and work them, and you'll find people that fell through the cracks that need it and want to, want to you know, buy life insurance. It, it, and it takes you back to, you know, what is a lead anyway, whether it's an A lead an overflow, an A minus, a B lead, a referral. A lead basically is just a good reason to start a conversation to find out if they have a want or need for your product. That's all it is. It's just an opener. It just gives you a good excuse to start a conversation. That's all a lead is, okay? And so I got to tell you this story. Um, a few months ago, I bought a hundred B leads. By the way, B cost two dollars and seventy-one cents. So you know that's easy math, two hundred and seventy-one dollars. And again, this was a few months ago. I kept offering these B leads to new agents. I'm talking about agents that come on and say, "I don't have a lot of money. I don't have money to buy leads," and I and I offered them free. 
you can have them. Go work them. And you know what, Joe? Almost all of them passed on the opportunity. Nobody wanted them. Two people said, I'll work them. So I had them already printed out. I gave 50 to one and 50 to the other. Whenever I would call to follow up and ask them how they did, I always got the runaround and never got a straight answer. That just indicates to me that they never worked them. They didn't see the value in them. And I'm sitting on these 100 leads. They're sitting in my, my, uh, my queue in my, my lead management system. And they're all bold, right? And I'm like, man, I need to work them. I, I just, I want to go out. I don't want to leave money on the table. These other people didn't see the opportunity. I, I want to work them. So I did exactly that. So starting uh, last Saturday, I printed out those leads again, and I started making calls. And so <clears throat> on Saturday morning, between the hours of 8.30 and 11.30, 11, uh, that's three hours of dial time, I made 105 phone calls. I, uh, I talked to 11 people, and I set three appointments. Now, that's not a whole lot to get excited about. And I got to tell you something. I didn't get those three appointments to like the last half or even, you know, closer to the, uh, the last hour. And, you know, it, the, you know, the thing is, is you got to just keep plugging away. It's the massive activity is what's going to get you the results. An hour and a half into it, halfway through, I hadn't had one single appointment and I was getting frustrated and I could have got down and I could have said, you know what, forget this. I'm going to go do something else. I could have gone home, been with the kids. I could have, you know, went and bought some breakfast. I, you know, I could have, I had a lot of things going through my mind that I'd rather be doing than sitting here getting rejected over the phone. Right. But I said, no, I'm going to keep plugging away. I'm not going to stop until I make my way through all of these calls, through all of these leads. So I did. And I ended up with three appointments. So I, I got kind of excited. I set them up for Monday. So then Sunday, I started at uh, 445. And I didn't even uh, dial for an hour. I think I was done by 540. So about 55 minutes. And I got three more appointments. I had a total of six appointments set up for Monday. So that's a, a great way to start the week. So on Monday, uh, I had two no-shows, right? So that happens, but I had four appointments that stuck, and I wrote two applications. Now, these were kind of baby apps. One was a $25 a month. The other one was $28, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that's $636 in, in annual premium on Monday. So Tuesday, I said, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to door knock. So I was able to knock on 14 doors. I uh, talked to four people and I made two more appointments. On uh, Wednesday, I went ahead and hit the phones again. I made 43 calls. I uh, talked to nine people, set two more appointments, and I actually went out and I did one door knock. Um, I had two sits on Wednesday and I closed two more apps on Wednesday. So I had a total of four apps. Uh, the two apps on Wednesday was for 13, 20 and AP. And, um, <clears throat> so I've had four sales, uh, all, all these are off the B leads yesterday. Um, I did some more door knocking and I talked to three more people. I didn't, I didn't get any, uh, uh, appointments yesterday. I didn't do any sits yesterday. And then, but I still have two appointments today lined up for this afternoon after the, after the call. So, I mean, right now I'm sitting on four apps, little ones, total annual premium, 1956, and those are off of B League. And so my point is this, you know, and, and I might get another sell today, right? But my point is this, is that just off of B Leads, you know, that's about $2,000 worth of commission. $271 was my upfront cost. You know, I'm ahead 1300 bucks. Um, and, and I might even get another sale today. That's off of B leads, folks. B leads is a great opportunity to generate some cash flow. Maybe that'll help you graduate to like A minus leads or some overflows, or maybe buy some Facebook leads. Um, if you are on leads and you got 
you know, A leads, you got a sufficient amount of leads, you mix this in with your A leads and now you're just adding extra cells. So think about it. If you had four or five cells off of A leads and you could add an extra four cells on top of that in B leads, I mean, you'd be crazy not to. So, I mean, it's a really good opportunity to increase your income. And he, Joe said something to me, he says, you know, Jimmy, the funny thing about it is 2000 a week. That's like making 100000 a year. And I'm looking at that as like, man, that's a really small week, you know. Um, but there's a couple of takeaways I really want to talk about. And, you know, when it comes to sales, that's what we all want. We all want the sales. You got to have um, leads to start with. So you got to have people to talk to. You have to prospect. And out of those calls or door knocks that you're prospecting, you're generating opportunity to make presentations. It's only then after you make the presentations that the sales come. And so like Joe has a really cool sales funnel, he shows it, leads are on top, gets a little narrow prospecting. From the prospecting, you're making presentations and then you're making sales. Well, most, most of the time people get hung up on the prospecting part. And really, in our industry, sales comes from two things, prospecting and presentations. If you're not going to prospect, you're not going to have people to talk to. You got to do the activity. And so I just want to encourage you to get out there. You need to, you need to set yourself a schedule. You know, this is a business. And I'm sure most of the people on this call at one time or another worked as an employee for somebody else. And when you were working for somebody else, you probably had a schedule to adhere to. You probably had to be at work at a certain time. You probably had to go to lunch at a certain time, return at a certain time, and then the end of day was at a certain time. You had to follow that schedule. Uh, most people didn't have uh, opportunities where they can pick and choose what days they wanted to work, right? They had a schedule they had to follow. Well, when you become your own business owner, uh, you have to write yourself a schedule and you have to adhere to it. Guys, if you're not getting up early, ready to start your day at eight or nine o'clock, if you're still in bed at that time, you're not being a good business person. No wonder why you're struggling in sales. You guys got to get up early. You got to have a plan. You got to have a schedule. You got to have the discipline to go out there and work the leads. Now, as a mindset for me, I look at prospecting as sifting. You know, I'm sifting through the leads and I'm trying to sort them out and I'm trying to remove the ones that are not interested, don't have a need, can't afford it. I mean, you have to sift through it to find those nuggets of gold. You know, that, that word prospecting, that comes from the 49ers back in California in the gold rush. That's where the word comes from. And they were with their pans in the water, sifting and shaking that dirt and sifting out and looking for that nugget of gold. And that's the same exact thing that we do is that we have to sift. We have to make the calls. We have to do the door knocks to find out who are the ones that are actually going to be the nuggets of gold? Who's going to get a presentation? And I'll, and I'll give you an example. On these B leads, some of the people that I that I went to, they died. They were already dead. Some of those people, the phone number didn't work, and I went to their house, and they moved. You know, I got resolution on that lead. I know I don't need to work it anymore. Um, some of those folks did buy insurance a couple of years ago when they originally mailed in that card. But that gives you an opportunity to ask them, how did you get your insurance? Did you do it by phone? Did you do it through the mail or did somebody come in person? And that's usually the first question I ask them. And you'll be surprised. Half of those people say they did it over the phone, which tells me that it's probably a graded policy. So that gives me something to talk about. See, just because someone tells you that they already have coverage doesn't mean that you just turn around and walk away. You got to dig in, try to get a good reason to do a policy review. You know, if anything, 
you show them that you're competent and you're an expert in your field. And even if what they have is perfect and they, they don't need anything else, but because they can see that you're competent, you're confident and you're an expert, they might give you a referral for somebody else. And so you just got to go through and do the sifting. It, it, it doesn't, nothing happens with the, without the activity. And so many times I've seen agents, they just have the, the hardest part, the struggle is that they don't want to do the prospecting. They don't want to make the phone calls. They don't want to do the door knock. They don't want to get up early. They don't want to uh, uh, door knock throughout the day. They give up at a certain time. Maybe they go do something else. Maybe they go watch a movie. Maybe they go to the gym. Maybe they go visit a friend. Maybe they go home and cut the grass. I mean, I don't know what's going on in their mind, but they're not working. And you got to keep going. It's that activity. When it, It's kind of like, what do they say about the insurance? It's, it's the law of large numbers. If you're not doing the large numbers, you're not going to find those nuggets of gold. So, Joe, I don't know if you want to add to that or, or you know, take your spin on it. No, you know what? Just a couple of things, man. Um, I, I'm with you. I, I think at the end of the day, activity is king. And you talked about sifting. That's, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the guys panning for gold. That's the perfect analogy. And that's kind of what we're doing when we're working leads is that we're we're panning for gold, man. And we're swishing that water around and looking for that, the, you know, the diamond in the rough or that, that golden nugget. Um, so what you said about, you know, being a sorter or a sifter, that's what a good salesperson is. A good salesperson is a professional sorter. That's what we do. And just to, to go, you know, in, into this and with, with having a lot of B leads, Jimmy, you didn't touch on this. I really want to touch on it. We've talked about being in lead, lead poverty before. Guys, if you don't know what lead poverty is, that's the agent that has very, very few leads and they're like like holding on to every lead. And what happens and when you don't have enough leads, when you have less leads and you have time, you start becoming emotionally attached to those leads and you become emotionally attached to the outcome of every lead. When you, when you have 100 B leads, it gives you the ability not to become um, uh, uh, mentally uh, or uh, you know, mentally attached to the outcome of every single lead. Number one, they're only two dollars and seventy-one cents, right? Big deal. You can you it, it, it's very easy to be able to to sort through those. And my big tip is on working B leads or working any leads is you got to do this, man. You got to work your B leads like they're A leads meaning treat them like they're new because you know what they're new to you and jimmy how many b leads have you worked before in the past maybe not on this batch but just in general where when you prospect a b lead and you find out that they just mailed in another card recently i get people that tell me all that all the time when i'm prospecting on a on a b lead that they say wow you guys are really fast i just mailed that in like a couple of days ago <laughs> you know they're, they're referring to a different lead because they mailed in another card. So, you know, and it, has it ever happened to you where you bought an A lead and you go there and they say, oh, um, you're too late. I already bought something. Well, chances are it was another agent working a B lead that that same client had sent in three years ago. So we can do the same thing, man. Work the snot out of these, out of these, uh, out of these B leads and work them like A leads. And work your A leads like B leads. And what I mean by that is that you got to, on A leads, they're not going to sell themselves. You got to prospect the snot out of them. Um, I think, Jimmy, you alluded to this. I think most agents, just because they're working A leads, they underestimate the amount of prospecting required to close a sale. So let no lead go unresolved that should be your job at the end of the day your job should be to resolve every single lead that you have and i promise you if you can resolve 90 to 95 percent of your leads you'll end up making presentations with about 50 to 60 percent of the prospects and you'll close 60 percent so you'll end up with about a 30 percent conversion meaning on every 20 a lead that you order 
you're going to end up with six to seven applications, provided you're willing to get every lead um, resolved. But that's what I had to say about that. And I wanted to see if um, I wanted to really quick talk about because um, I had mentioned this last last week. Talk a little bit about Facebook leads and um, prospecting um, prospecting on Facebook leads. My thought process on Facebook leads is don't work them any different than than you know a direct mail lead. I'm still gonna I'm gonna call them. Um, the advantages with Facebook leads is that now we have extra ways to communicate. Well, let me see if um, if Brian was available. He said he was going to be on the call. I see him. Let, let's see if he's available to talk. Brian, I'm going to unmute you, buddy. Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Joe. Hey, are you available to, to talk? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool, dude. Uh, everybody, Brian Schweiss is on the call. He's been working uh he's been ordering facebook leads for it's been about a month or so right maybe two months uh yeah it's about a month or so all right so guys facebook leads are relatively um new to us i know they've been around for a while um but we just you know we just got hooked up with a vendor uh actually two vendors we've kind of narrowed it down to one and i just wanted to brian to get on real quick and just talk about um what so far what you have found to be the most effective ways uh, when it comes to prospecting your Facebook leads? Yeah, I mean, really, there's a lot of different ways that you can reach these customers. Um, I mean, besides the phone, you know, they, they come with the email address. So obviously email has been effective as well. Um, uh, a lot of these, most of these people are using cell phones. So they're either looking up the information on their cell phones or whatever it is. So texting them has, has helped as well. Um, and obviously door knocking. So really there's utilizing all four of them has helped just be able to reach these customers, whether it's, you know, whether it's good or bad. I mean, sometimes you reach people and they just say they're not interested, but at least you have closure on it. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, I've, um, I find it pretty effective. Just, I start off with calls. I usually put in at least three calls to each person. And then if I'm not getting any response that way, I'll move on to email, you know, send a couple emails and then text and, and just, and for me, my last resort has been door knocking. So, okay. um, I can usually uh, penetrate the list pretty well through calls, emails, and texting, you know, so that's what I've found. Got it. What's been the most, uh, where would you say the way you're booking the majority of the appointments? What 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 type of communication? Uh, phone calls. Yeah, usually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, phone calls. I can usually get them um, within the first couple calls. At least a lot of them. Um, you know, I, I I always leave a message on the first one because they're expecting me to call. You know, they have my phone number, they have my name, they have all that stuff. So. When they see it come up on the caller ID, maybe they didn't get it right away because they might be at work or whatever it is. But I've had people respond through text after I've left them a message saying, you know, sorry, Brian, I, I wasn't available. Can you call me at this time? Or, you know, sorry, Brian, I'm out of town on vacation. Can you call me next week? You know, they'll send back a text that way. So um, I find, yeah, the phone's been the most effective way. And, uh, uh, for for all the different ways there. So so do you have a um, are you are you using kind of a like a modified script when you call or is it are you saying something similar to what we would on a direct mail lead? Yeah, I think it's pretty similar. I mean, these Facebook leads they give you a certain script that they recommend, and okay. I don't I sort of take it from that, but I don't go word for word off of that. But it, it's similar to the direct mail ones. The thing I like to do is make sure in the very first sentence is to bring up Facebook. Yeah. You know, something along the lines of, you know, my name is Brian Schweiss. Um, you know, you were recently on Facebook and you re you requested more information about these final expense leads and or not leads, but final expense information. Um, so I, I make sure that's probably the biggest thing is I try to do is make sure I bring up Facebook in the first sentence because that automatically 
it sort of triggers them like, oh yeah, I did. I was just on there this morning or I was just on there last night or something. So Got but, it. Yeah, just keep, it keep, in mind, keep in mind with the Facebook leads, uh, Brian talked about leaving a message. Now on direct mail leads, we always tell agents never, ever, ever, ever leave a message. Okay. Cause then they know who's calling, <laughs> but on Facebook leads it's different because you've got to remember that they're, they're requesting the information electronically and they're required to put in a phone number and an email address. So the client is getting an email and a text letting them know that they're going to be contacted by Brian and to be looking for the call. So in this scenario, it's perfectly okay to leave a, uh, a phone message, whereas uh, the other types of leads, direct mail, tel telemarketed leads, we typically never leave a, uh, we never leave a message. Um, well, that's really good stuff, man. That's uh, very, very um, encouraging news. Guys, if you are interested in ordering um, Facebook leads, um, let me know. We'll continue to do some additional training as far as, um, you know, prospects, how to overcome objections. That's really going to be about the same. Um, overcoming objections with a Facebook lead versus another type of lead, really not going to be much difference there. Remember, at the end of the day, the the your, your job, and like what Brian said, Jimmy has said, I'm saying it, is, man, just do your best to resolve every single lead that you get. And remember, the best the best result that you can get from any type of lead, the best result is obviously for a client to say yes and to move on with an application. The second best result that you can get is a client says no. They decline the coverage. They're not interested. You can't close them for whatever reason. That's the second best. The worst result is having a lead in limbo, having a lead not resolved. That's the that's the that's the worst outcome that you can possibly get um, with a lead. It comes down to what Jimmy was talking about in in um, uh, sifting and 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 and, and sorting. Uh, so you want to try to get those leads resolved as much as possible. So Brian, I really appreciate you uh, hopping on here just for a second and sharing. Um, any other little nuggets or tidbits that you want to uh, leave to the audience? Um. No, I think you hit it on the head there as far as like uh, getting an answer from these clients. I feel like that's been easier with these leads. And like you said, you don't have to spin your wheels on the maybes as much, you know, because you are, you know, whether it's through, you know, email or text or phones, I mean, you can penetrate that list pretty well. And like you said, there's yeses to appointments or sales or whatever, but then sometimes they email back and say, sorry, not interested. I was just looking for whatever. You know, and but yeah. at least you have closure on it and you don't have to drive out there and door knock them. You know? Exactly. Yeah. You know, you're not wasting your time on the maybe. So I find that to be more effective that way. So absolutely. It, it, the, the lead is resolved. Remember, these leads are, um, you know, a little bit are less expensive than than direct mail leads. Are you still um, are, you, are you just getting 20? Are you averaging a little bit more than that? What's been your average per campaign? For me in my area, um, it's 20. And okay. uh, I know they've said that they guarantee at least 20 or if you go weekly, 22. Uh, but in, in Illinois, from what they've told me, that it's a more difficult area. So I haven't benefited from getting more than that on a weekly okay. order, but they have gotten me 20 each time. It just, um, but that's been like the maximum, so. All right, so you're doing, okay. So you're getting at least, okay, you're getting the minimum. So it's $350 per campaign divided by 20 equals, so that's $17.50, guys. That's almost, not quite, but almost half the price from a, uh, than a, than a direct mail lead. So, all right, Brian, well, thank you very much for participating. I appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Hey, right, Joe. Have a, have a great day, yeah. I wanted to add something, and I just wanna say hi, Brian, real quick. <laughs> um, you know, one of the one of the things that you can do with this Facebook campaign is you can do road trips. I mean, I, I'm sitting here thinking about this. You know, I, 
I, I love to do road trips and I call myself the king of road trips. So what I do is basically look for leads available in different counties. And even if it's a four or five hour drive from San Antonio, I will still go there. And, and you know, ideally you want a little bit of everything maybe there's you know 20 overflows and then maybe you know 10 a minus and maybe you know 30 40 50 b leads i'd like to scoop them all up for one county and go work them all that's how i do it but you know you can add the facebook to that because see now being that facebook is instant let's say you want to go work uh, a particular county where there's some uh leads in inventory you can place your order for that county for that week and you're going to start getting those leads in every day uh instantly and now you mix that up with those leads or other type of leads that are in inventory and you'll have a very successful week so i just thought i'd point that out is that you know the the, the beauty of facebook is that you it's instant you don't have to wait there's not a delayed uh response to get your lead if you start that campaign today you're going to start getting leads today You'll get three or four every day for the whole week. So if you want to do a road trip, you might want to, you know, um, add Facebook into that mix. Yeah, you know, that's a great tip, man. I never, never thought about that. Um, great, great nugget. That's why we could do these calls, man, because we're always brainstorming and always thinking of, of new things. So, uh, Jimmy, with that, anything else um, or should we move on to the next topic? Let's move on. All right. Sounds good. Guys, um, we've been talking about this every week, um, utilizing the asset gathering form. I just want to hit on this again, and I just um, want to provide you guys with kind of a simple script um, to use uh, when utilizing the asset gathering form. If you're having trouble, I guess, trying to tra like transition into it, um, one thing I recommend is just have this in your the pre-sale folder with everything else. And then just kind of an easy transition here is, is just say this, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Client, part of my responsibility as a state licensed agent is to, is to identify if you even need a program like this and just look at them, just say, hey, let's face it, there's no reason to spend money on something you don't need. And they're gonna agree with you. Uh, part of my job is to find out if you already have beneficiary designated accounts. And this is when you're going through these areas here um, where it says uh, current retirement accounts, 401k, 403b, all these different plans, pension, IRAs. So just use this. Part of my job is to find out if you already have any beneficiary designated accounts. They may come back and say, well, Joe, what is a beneficiary designated account? Very simple. You know, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a beneficiary designated account is really any such account like a bank account, a 401k, IRA, pension, life insurance, or maybe a brokerage account where you named a beneficiary upon your death. You see, Mr. and Mrs. Client, these types of accounts upon a person's death would convert into a death benefit. That's simply an easy way to, if it were to come up, if, if they were to ask, well, why are you asking me about my 401k? Say, well, you know, because it's a uh, 401k is a type of beneficiary designated account. And you can just give them this very simple um, explanation to that. Jimmy, anything that you'd like to add into this subject about um, maybe help helping agents feel a little bit more at ease when it comes to doing the asset gathering form? Mm, I mean, that's all you got to do. I, I'll, I'll tell you this. You got to have a good response for when they do have a 401k. And, 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 and this is what I tell people is that, oh, great. Um, we also help people convert their 401k, either, you know, all of it or, or part of it into a pension plan that gives them a guaranteed income for life. And, that, and that's how I, I never use the word annuity. So I just say, you know, we can help you convert all or a portion of it into a pension plan with a guaranteed income for life and so yeah people are, love pensions right yeah and 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 then you can come back to it you don't need to like stay there and sit on it and scare them just kind of let's throw a little plug in there and then you can come back to that later build your rapport make your cell and come back to that 
Perfect. That's a great, uh, great, great thing. See, I just learned something else, man. Pension plan. Love it. <laughs> uh, because what is a pension plan, Jimmy? A pension plan is nothing more than an annuity with a with guaranteed premiums for life, right? That's correct. That's what an that's what a pension is. It's actually an annuity. Uh, well, guys, let's move on. We're going to get into the um, product training portion of our call. And I think I'm I'm going to cover a product today that most of you probably know that we have, but you're not writing it. And I'm going to say shame on you. This is probably one of the best products that we have within our portfolio. And it's the Mutual of Omaha, um, the, their accidental coverage. Um, they call it the Guaranteed Advantage Accidental Death Insurance uh, because it is guaranteed issue. There is absolutely... There's no medical questions. They don't ask about driver's licenses, uh, whether or not you have DUIs or anything. You could be a convicted felon. You can still get this product. Okay. It is a true guaranteed issue. The only thing that would keep you from qualifying for this is that um, you got to have a bank account <laughs> to, to qualify. Okay. They don't accept money orders and they don't accept third party uh, payers. So if you're selling it to someone and they don't have a bank account, they can't get their mama to pay for it, okay? Unless the mama is on the, the program. Uh, so I'm going to go over um, this program. Here's what I will tell you. Um, I don't know about last year, but I know two years ago in 2017, um, the number one agent in the country for Mutual of Omaha, this is the only product that they wrote. They didn't write anything else. It was 100% of the issue paid premium was um, was with this accident product, and they were the number one um, agent um, in the country. So think about your placement and persistency. You should have virtually 100% placement unless you screw up the paperwork, and it's a relatively cheap premium, so I think most people would keep it. Here are just, um, oh, okay, before I get into the highlights, um, quotes on the go, it is available on the mobile calculator. If you don't have the, the, the Mutual of Omaha mobile calculator, download it. Just go to your app store, type in Mutual of Omaha. It'll pop right up, download it. You don't need a password. You don't need an agent number. It's open to the public. Anybody can do it. And then this down here, this is a list of all the products that you can do. So guys, I'm going to kind of go through this kind of quick. So we can get uh, done with our call on time. But these are some of the um, the highlights of the product. Let me just get a pin here real quick. Give me a second. Actually, I'm going to do. Change the color. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put some check marks here. So issue ages, they have to be to, to own the policy. They have to be at least 18. Issue ages up to 70. Face amounts, you can go as low as 50,000 all the way up to 500,000. Um, again, we mentioned it's guaranteed issue. You can do it monthly or quarterly or annually. There's a $50 uh, policy fee. It is a commissionable fee. There is a return of premium rider available for ages 50 and under. If your client is age 51, they would not be eligible for the return of premium. And if you're going to do a family, let's say a husband and wife, and you want to do return of premium, they both have to be under under 50. Okay. Um, I can give you some examples too, if you just because there is a family plan. So I'll just give you this little nugget. Um, if one of them is under 50, then what I would do is I wouldn't do. I would write two policies. I'd write one. Let's say the husband's 51, the wife's 48, just as an example. Well, I would write the husband at the regular rate, um, non obviously non-return of premium, and then do the wife um, with return of premium. And if they have any children, then add the children onto the wife's. So you're getting you're getting two policies, and the uh, at least they're getting partial benefit from the return of premium. And it is guaranteed renewable till age 80. The premiums are level. That premiums will never go up. Um, age 80, the policy does end. And let's see, here's just some more highlights. These were already covered. 
Um, okay, when you write, when you do the family plan, let's say you're going to cover a husband and wife. The spouse is covered for 100% of whatever the um, the other spouse is. So if you're doing a husband and wife, uh, regardless of who's as the primary insured, if you do it for 100,000, they're both going to be covered for 100,000. If you do add the children's rider, the children are going to be covered for 20% of what the face amount is, regardless of how many kids they have. So you're going to have like seven kids. Um, so so again, easy math. If you're doing 100,000, 20% of that would be 20,000. So each kid on the policy would be covered for 20,000. There's also a free common carrier uh, death benefit. So if they do die while uh, being a uh, fair paying um, participant on some type of public transportation, um, it does double. Um, that's pretty cool. And then there's also the auto pedestrian benefit, which gives them an additional 25 on any type of um, accident caused by auto. So if they're in a car crash or if they get hit by a car, let's say they're walking across the street and they get hit, it's going to pay out. Or if they die while in a car crash, it's going to pay out an additional 25%. Let's just see here. Uh, spouse is eligible if, if they're between the ages of 18 and 70. Remains on the polity until age 80. Let's see, unmarried dependent children. So if you're going to do the children, they need to be um, under the age of, of 19, and they will stay on the policy until they are 23, unless they're a um, unless they're a full-time college student. So here it says dependent children ends at age. Let's see. Oh, dependent children coverage ends at age 21 or 25 if they're a full-time student. Okay, that's the rule on that. Uh, return of premium benefits. We're going to go over that in a minute. Remember, you got to be under the age of 50 to do that. And let's see here. All right, let's move on. That's everything I want to cover here. Here are just some of the highlights. Uh, guaranteed advantage is guaranteed issue for all clients that apply. There's no health questions, no medical exam. There's also no occupational restrictions. So they could have the most dangerous job, you know, out there. Uh, you know, construction worker, iron worker working on high rise building, garbage collectors, um, those guys that work on the the uh, those those high um, electrical wires, those would be covered as well. Um, now they can only have one one policy through Mutual of Omaha, but they could have other policies, other accidental policies through other carriers. Okay, uh, just keep that in mind. So if if you have a client that already has a Mutual of Omaha accidental, but they're looking for more, you'd have to replace it. You could not add to it. But let's say they already had accidental with another company, then that's okay. Okay. Um, spouses cannot be added after the policy is issued. They're required to apply for their own policy. So if you're going to do a husband and wife, make sure you get them on there. And then any new children that they have. So let's say you're doing a family and uh, let's say they have two children. Well, for as long as that policy is in, in force, they can add any, any new children that they have either either of their own or if they're adopted children, um, they can add those after the policy has been issued. The primary insured is the owner of the policy, okay? And so you can't have someone else be the owner. And the payer of the premium must be one of the proposed insureds. So as an example, if you have a husband and wife, you're doing a family plan, um, let's say, for example, let's say you put the husband first, um, he would be the owner of the policy, but let's say the wife has her, she wants to come out of her bank account, that's fine, okay? But what I was talking about before, what you can't do is, let's say you got a 25-year-old kid that wants this policy, but they don't have a bank account, he's going to get his mom to pay for it, that won't work, okay? It has to be one of the, one of the insureds on the policy. Now, you can do non- U.S. citizens may be covered as long as they have a permanent resident card. So they can't be undocumented, but as long as they have a permanent resident card, uh, like a green card, then you can get them uh, on there. All you got to do is list their permanent resident um, ID card on the application. 
Jimmy, how are we doing so far? Any questions? You're doing great, Joe. All right, awesome. Guys, this is the return of premium feature on the product. Remember, you got to be under age 50, but this is the schedule, how long you have to be into it to get your money back. So as an example, um, if you're into it for 10 years and you cancel the policy, you're going to get 21% of your premiums paid. You got to be into it for at least 30 years to get 100% of the premiums paid. So as an example, if you're 50, which is the last year you can get return of premium, the policy would end at age 80 and you would get your money back at age 80 as well. Now, let's say you're 30 years old. Well, for a 30 year old, if they wanted to, they could um, opt out of the policy at age 60 because they've been into it for the 30 years. They could keep and they could get the return of premiums, but the policy would be canceled at that point. So more than likely, they would go ahead and keep it till age 80, as an example. Um, this way, they're going to get, you know, they get a longer benefit. They get the policy for an extra 20 years, and they're still going to get 100% back. And now I want to show you what the rates are. The rates are very, very affordable um, for this coverage. And this is why I'm saying we're, we're kind of, we're probably leaving money on the table because I would totally do this as like at the end of the sale, once you've wrapped up your final expense sales and then come back and say, oh, you know what, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I totally forgot. Um, I, sh I apologize. I should have showed you this. Let me show you what most clients are doing. They're adding on the accidental um, coverage to their policy. And guys, look, someone who is, um, let's say, in their 60s, all the way up to age, uh, all the way up to age 70, 70, which is the maximum issue for 50,000. It's only 13 bucks a month. That's like really, really cheap. So I mean, if you're selling someone a policy, let's say they're picking up a 10 or $15,000 um, policy and they're paying 60, 70 bucks a month, they may see the value of paying an extra $13 to get $50,000 of coverage. And I'll show you here in a minute if it's a husband and wife. Um, if it's a younger person with a child, these are the rates for one adult plus their children. Very, very reasonable. As you can see, most of those clients would probably be in the, I would say probably the 18 to 50 range. 50,000 is only $12. So that's pretty cheap. And then say, this is the, this is the family, uh, two adults plus children. And this is what I really wanted to show you right here. This is the uh, two adults, no children. So this could be on a situation. Remember, you know, you, when you have these sits, these sales where you have a husband and wife, but maybe they're only getting coverage on one of them, but because the other one already has some coverage. Here you could do a family plan and look at this. Let's say you have someone who's 65 years old. So they fall into this bracket right here. Uh, $50,000 for two of them would only be $16.59 and they would both be covered for $50,000. And for twenty eight or for, for $100,000, it's only $28 a month. So it's very, very, very reasonable. And remember, issue ages all the way up to 70. So this is a great product for people in their 50s and 60s. It's very inexpensive. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a guaranteed approval, guys. And then real quick, I'm going to go over the application. I think it's pretty, pretty easy. It's a relatively short application. I don't think there's anything too tricky on here. I'm just going to go over it with you just to make sure. Uh, pretty straightforward. You're going to put in the primaries, insured legal name, their residence. Of course, you got to have social security number, male, female, date of birth, age, telephone number, email address. If they have it, it's not required. You have to answer the question if they're U.S. citizens. If they're not, you have to put in their green card number and then the date that they arrived in the U.S. Uh, put down the amount of the benefit. So let's say we're doing 100,000, that would go there. And then which plan are you applying for? Are you doing an individual, a family, a family with spouse or spouse and children or children only? Children only would be um, if you're only covering one adult with a child, okay? So, uh, so in that case, what I would do, 
I would check the family plan and then children only. Uh, bank service plan, you're going to you're going to need to obviously get in the their um, checking account information or savings. The modal premium would be how much it is. So if you're doing, let's say, 100,000 for $28 a month, that would go there. Amount collected typically is zero. And then this is where you add in the children. Um, if you need more room, then you you just it just is list them on a separate sheet of paper. So in that example, if you've got a family that's got a, a you know a, a lot of kids, six or seven kids, um, it says right here if you need space to list your children, list them on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, and then the who are the um, beneficiaries going to be? Relationship contingent beneficiary. Uh, and then you're just asking if it's replacing any coverage. Okay, nowhere here is it asking you anything about any health. This is the producer report. You're going to put your name in here. Make sure that you sign it. Uh, and again, you, that's this is again the producer. And then the EFT. Now, the one thing that's different about the EFT on this is that as of right now, they only give you two um, options for when the premiums are gonna be come out, either the first of the month or the 15th. Those are the only two options. Um, so hopefully maybe they'll get that changed down the road. Um, but, you know, typically, so you wanna find out when they're getting their, uh, their social security and then try to get it coordinated with that to make sure that they have the money. Um, the other thing too, that just as a note, um, and I found out this the hard way, is keep in mind with these accidental policies, when you submit the application, they are going to draft the premiums immediately. So you cannot future date these applications. I'm glad I just thought of that. Um, that got me in a lot of trouble once where, um, like I wrote the policy like on the 20th and I put down that they want the first premium on the first. I just assume that they wouldn't draft it until the first, but they immediately drafted the accounts and it, everything got screwed up. So um, don't future date these. Uh, I mean, you, you can't future, um, you can future date the application, but you can't future date the, the initial draft. So as an example, if I'm writing a policy today, uh, but they don't want the premiums to come out till the 15th, my recommendation is hold this policy. Hold the application in your office um, until about the about the 14th, because they only take about a day um, to get approved. And these are available as well on electronic um, applications. So, guys, that's uh, we've hit our time limit here. That's the Mutual of Omaha guaranteed accidental coverage. Jimmy, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just thought I'd add a little sales tip for okay. uh, accidental death. And that is occasionally I'll come across somebody that I call it the greed factor. And let's say, uh, you know, you guys have heard, you know, uh, champagne taste beer budget, right? Let's say you talk to somebody and they want a hundred thousand dollars or maybe they want 50 or 75,000 of coverage, right? But they can't afford that. You know, they can afford 10 or 15,000. That's what they can afford, but they're caught up on those numbers. All right. And I've done this a couple of times. Let's say, let's go with the person that wants a hundred thousand. I'll go ahead and quote them a ten thousand dollar whole life and a ninety thousand dollar accidental life, and I'll give them one payment for both. And I explain it to them that look, if you die by accidental death, you're going to have a total death benefit of a hundred thousand. If it's natural causes, they're going to pay 10000 And I explained it to them, but it's the greed factor. And they're looking at that big $100,000 number, and they'll sign up. And sometimes it's it's what they need to move forward. And, and so not only does it help me close the uh, the whole life sell, but now I actually picked up an extra app with a little bit more premium on it. So just kind of play with that. Be creative and uh, good selling. Yeah, great tip. One other real quick comment before we let you guys go. Keep in mind, um, this is a considered to be a health product. So if you're going to write this, you do need to have a health insurance license. Okay. 
Um, all right, Jimmy. Thanks for everything today, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. All right, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.